Okay, this video is about debugging a Nissan car fob. The car was a Nissan Alpha. And uh, the situation was my wife's car fob um, stopped working. It was giving a low battery indication. The car fob that I had for the car <coughs> always had a low battery. And I never used it in the battery mode. I always used it with the key and pushing the button. Well, my wife went to the dealer and they gave her a new battery. And that's the new battery they gave her Energizer. Now it turned out I had a lot of these <coughs> CR2032s at home just because my wife had bought quite a number of these little lamps for Christmas. And apparently they probably came with these 2032s already in them. So I figured I could change my own battery because um, I had so many of these. And what happened was I put a battery in it and it still wouldn't work. And I assumed that Maybe there was just a problem with this car fob. And I even went online and got some advice about these probes, lifting them up. And I'm also lifting up the probe on here to make sure it was making contact. And that didn't actually fix the problem. So finally, I had some time and I said, well, I'd like to get to the bottom of it. I don't need this battery in order to run this, but I just wanted to know whether or not this car fob was any good. And what I did was I started swapping components from my wife's fob onto my fob. So I took the back of my wife's with the dealer battery on mine and it worked fine. And then I subsequently traced it down to the battery and the issue is that um, the battery seemed fine. Let me give you an example. I tried quite a few batteries in it. And of course, what I did was I tested their voltage and I tried to find one that was pretty good. So here's an example of a battery that's 2.92. Well, that seems pretty good. Let's try another one here. 3.07, so that seems pretty good. And here's one here that the dealer one is 2.99, 2.989. So this one is actually higher, okay? But this might have been in the category where it didn't actually work. I didn't, I can't say for sure because I didn't actually put every single one of them in there. It's just that I tried a couple and none of them seemed to work. Even one that I had selected for a high battery voltage. Okay, so then I decided, okay, there's got to be an issue with the load. So I started testing them with a, a load resistor. I put a 2K load resistor, which will draw about one and a half milliamps. Now, if I test the battery with this load, okay, what I'm getting on this one now is 2.6 volts. And on the dealer one, what I'm getting is, whoops, 2.94. So in other words, the dealer one didn't drop very much. And this one I um, had here actually dropped from three to 2.6. Now you might say maybe it should still work, but it probably didn't. Or it's conceivable that this one did because I didn't try all of them, but this was one of the ones that had a higher than three volt initial voltage. So what I did was I started testing all of them with load and I sorted them with load. Here's an example of one. They were all about near three volts with, without a load. Here's one that with a load comes all the way down to 1.9 volts. So if it was less than two volts with that load, I put it in this pile, which is to say it's probably no good. Although it might still work. 
to light the lamp, for example, but it would probably possibly light it very dimly. These ones might light the lamp just fine. But in terms of operating the car fog, what I did was I took the one of all of them that when I had it with the load, it gave me the most reasonable result, which in this case, look, it's 2.96 and it was without the load, it was only 3.0 something. So it didn't drop very much. It's on par with the dealer battery, which was a new battery. This one, honestly, I don't know how long it's been sitting around, but it seems fine. Based on that, I did put that one into um, the car fog just to test my hypothesis. And it turned out it did start the car in the remote mode or the battery mode. Okay. So that really just kind of shows you that, and I have a different, I had a previous video where I did this, but I didn't use an example of a three volt lithium cell, which this one is, this button cell. So always on a piece of battery equipment, you have to consider that the battery is weak if it's not a brand new battery. I suppose even if you had a brand new battery, it might've been sitting on the shelf. The real thing is, is to have a reasonable load. I would say draw a milliamp from it because if, if you test it with something like this, this has over a mega ohm, let's say, of input impedance and it's only going to be drawing a microamp or microamp levels. You want basically milliamp levels. So anyway, that's all for this. And let me stop that.